ओम शांति ट्वेंटी थर्ड जून टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन संडे स्लोगन फॉर्चुनेट सोल्स आर दोस हु रिसीव ब्लेसिंग फ्रॉम द हार्ट ऑफ ऑल सोल्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रूथ फॉर्चुनेट सोल्स और दोज हु रिसीव ब्लेसिंग्स फ्रॉम द हार्ट ऑफ ऑल सोल्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रूथ सो द फॉर्चुनेट सोल्स और दोज हु हैव ट्रूथ विद इन दम एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रूथ दे रिसीव blessings from the heart of all souls so the blessing is coming from the heart it's not coming from the brain but coming from the heart so these are the fortunate souls this is the definition of the fortunate soul those who have truth in them truth is yet not a very good translation of the word satya truth when we say it means reality to act in a manner that is consistent consistent with reality or truth but the depth of the word satya is much more the concept of satya has highly been praised and spoken all over the different scriptures of the world satya is more of behavior satya is more of demeanor acharan satya has got three components thought words and deeds so when there is a truth in thoughts words and deed the person is said to be stabilized in satya and this concept of satya is there almost in all the religions of the world there is hardly any religion which doesn't talk of truth if we just take hinduism it has been widely spoken of in the vedic literature where satya is said to be the highest code of conduct of life especially rigved praises satya a lot if you go to upanishad one of the most famous statements in the mundak upanishad is satya me vijayate that is truth always triumphs not the falsehood if you go to the patanjali's yoga sutra satya is one of the five rules or yamas so even in the mahabharata in the shanti parva lot of virtuous things are discussed where satya is said to be the highest so there's yet another two words one is satya and another is sat there the two words they use sat is something that remains unchangeable all the time sat is something that remains true in all the three aspects of time satya means truth but the truth which is unchangeable and the truth which remains the same in all the three aspects of time past present and future is something that is known as sat and sat is always one and truth is always one ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti that is truth is one but the intelligent one the intelligentsia the brahmins describe the same truth in different ways so tr- truth is the highest principle of life it is said that is satya the entire hinduism places the highest importance to satya 
So this concept of truth is always there and against the concept of truth is the concept of falsehood. Falsehood means asatya. So there is truth and satya and there is asatya. There is something known as lie. Lie is jute. So what is the difference between falsehood and lie? This is satya. This is asatya. Truth and falsehood. This is such that is true and lie. In the lie, cheating is associated. Lie is untruth plus cheating. Untruth is untruth. He spoke the untruth. Lie, the intention is bad. Here, falsehood is untruth. But we don't know about the intention. But here, intention is definitely cheating. These other words like bluffing. Bluffing is further extension of lying. It's a greater cheating and greater lying. That is bluffing. And there are eight different types of lies. One is white lie. White lie means unintentional. Where are you going? Just moving around. Though I am not moving around, but unintentional. There is minor lie. There is something known as exaggeration. You exaggerate the truth. Somebody did a program and 50 people came in one center. And they say more than 100 were there. And it was highly successful. Somebody has gone to give speech and about 500 people came. He said more than 1000 were there. There were no place even to sit. So you exaggerate the truth. There is a second form of untruth. The third is bold faced lie. Straight. People know like uh, somebody knocks the door. Is he there? He says, no, I am not there. So it's straight <laughs> pinpoint lie. And that is known as bold faced lie. Then there are fabrications. Fabrication means concocted truth. Hmm? Mangadant. You add many things into that. You concoct the truth. You tamper with the truth. So, fabricated, like fabricated story, uh, false story, or uh, tall story. Baba said in Bhakti Mark, in the path of Bhakti, there is a lot of fabrication. So, that is fabrication. So, we resort to fabricate. And then, sometimes, it is plagiarism. Plagiarism is to steal literature. You know, it is known as piracy. So there is a stealing in that. So you quote somebody, but you tell as if it is your thought. It is somebody else's experience. Somebody had a very good experience with Baba that he felt he was caught up in difficulty and Baba saved him. You heard it and now you tell it, it is my story. So you steal experiences. So that is plagiarism. And then there is a deception. You deceive. The intention is deception. In order to deceive, you lie. Like a person is going with a goat and three robbers decide to deceive him. The first one meets him and he says, Where are you taking this donkey? He says, Donkey? It's not donkey, it's goat. He says, Okay, if you feel it is goat, it's fine. The second thug 
the robber is at another place he says oh this donkey is very good i want to purchase it he says it is not donkey it is goat but now it is he is doubtful he starts seeing it is it really a goat which i am carrying on my shoulder so he keeps it down and let it walk and then he washes his face to make sure that this is not donkey but he feels no this is goat now the third person is sitting at another place he says oh this donkey is excellent i can pay any amount but i want it he said this is not donkey this is goat is it your desire and the fourth person by the time he reaches the fourth person this man thinks it is donkey and he says take it away i don't want donkey before anybody sees me from my village that i am carrying a donkey on my head so this is a deception so there is a untruth involved there so then there are broken promises you promise that okay i'll come at 6 o'clock you don't come and people promise that we will do this we will do that and all are broken this is quite common in today's youth world and compulsive lying it's an habit people keep on lying the whole day it has become compulsion it has become a habit it has become a disease so these are different types of lies so on one side is truth on other side is falsehood truth is a very high virtue very very high virtue to remain truthful in thought words and deeds it's a great thing very great thing what you think and what that you speak in today's sakar murli in avyakt murli baba has described nine benefits of powerful thoughts samartha sankalp out of them one is that a person who is having samartha sankalp powerful thoughts he will think the same what he will speak thinking and speaking is same i have described nine different types of benefits or the things that happen with samarth sankal and one of them is what a person thinks the same he speaks this is one of them so truth is a very high virtue as i said in every religion truth has been praised if you go to buddhism there are four noble truths and these four noble truths are the ways to get rid of sorrow there are basically three things which are described in buddhism one is there is sorrow in the world there is a reason for the sorrow and there is a way to get rid of sorrow there is a suffering in the world and the cause of the suffering is desire ichha there is cause the cause is desire and the way to get rid of that there is a way to get rid of this desire and there are then four noble truths that's why truth is upheld in a very high position if you go to jainism jainism has got five mahavrat the great vows of jainism and one of the great vows of jainism is truth so truth is the highest there if you go to the sik literature again and again multiple times it has come gurumukh is one who is truthful so whether it is in buddhism one who reaches bodhisattva or in jainism the one who reaches arihant stage they all are the beings of truth if you go in christianity jesus says my father is truth and so i am i am the way the truth and life come you all ye all that labor and i shall give you rest so it is again the truth i am the way the truth and life and come you all my father that is very is the truth come to me i shall what i speak i do not speak on my own account i speak on the be- on the behalf of my father who is truth and the truth which is in heaven so even god is described as truth sat chit anand he is described as sat ch 
chit and anand sometimes they describe truth as existence knowledge and bliss so he is the embody he is the ocean of truth he is the ultimate truth he is the param satya he is the last truth he is the last word in religion so coming back to today's slogan baba says fortunate souls are those who receive blessings from the hearts of all souls on the basis of truth so when there is a truth in the heart the character becomes truthful when one is there is a truth in the heart the person's character is truthful truth means there is consistency in what he thinks what he speaks and what he does so thoughts words and deeds they are same they are in alignment with each other it's not that what i am thinking is in sharp contrast with what i speak and that itself again is sharp contrast with what i do so thinking speaking and doing they are all going in different directions so when such a thing is happening there is a confusion in the mind when such a thing is happening there is a disturbance in the mind because person is inconsistent you cannot trust such a person he says i'll come he never comes he says i will do this and he never does you have trusted him in some center for example there is a, some big program is organized and the teacher has given responsibilities to many people and one person is given the job or the task the seva of inviting all the guests and he forgets and then or the one person is given the task of getting groceries from the shop and he forgets forgets or deliberately doesn't do or he is unreliable you cannot trust so is very difficult dangerous people who are full of untruth so truth means where there is a consistency that's why mahatma gandhi said in his book that my life is an experiment with truth i have made my life as a laboratory the whole life is a laboratory and i keep on experimenting with truth there is one chapter in his book canker of untruth canker means disease there's a plant to disease canker of untruth means the disease of untruth so he describes how he also got affected by this disease of untruth so this satya is a very great virtue very high virtue he himself describes that i resorted to smoking and i spoke untruth i stole from the pockets of the servants to have kash to have cigarette and i spoke untruth i ate non veg i spoke untruth though it was not direct but i kept it hidden from my father so untruth entered and whenever there is untruth there is restlessness wherever there is a falsehood there is a restlessness there are certain disadvantages of jhoot asatya what are they when you speak untruth what happens first thing is that whenever you speak untruth to hide one untruth you have to create many untruths so one untruth leads to multiple untruths second with different people you have to give different statements different people you have to speak different statements third you have to remember a lot when you speak untruth truth is simple whatever one statement you keep on repeating it but untruth you have to devise different people different statements and untruth you have to remember a lot untruth there is a lot of uneasiness restlessness untruth there is a fear that it will get revealed untruth if continued for long time becomes an habit habitual habit of speaking untruth habit untruth leads to unhappiness untruth leads to repentance so untruth is a very false coin and truth is what are the advantages of truth you don't have to remember much what you saw keep on repeating the same statement so no fear no question of remembering 
then yeah sometimes you remain confident with the truth will ultimately tr- win there is no fear and the boat of untruth goes down though the boat of truth will waver but it will not get drowned while the boat of untruth it doesn't waver straight away it goes down so truth and untruth and baba often says truth is a power and the greatest truth is that i am soul and the greatest truth is that i am the child of the supreme soul and the greatest truth is that my existence is to go back to the source my existence is go back to the source from where i have come so whenever there is a truth in the heart baba said then you would start receiving blessings from others if somebody is speaking something and doing something people will stop respecting after some time somebody is giving very powerful talk on amrit vela and he himself is not doing then what will it have any impact somebody is talking a lot about purity but inside there is a breach of brahmacharya that will not have effect so that's why if you want to earn blessings you need honest and true heart true and honest heart that heart alone earns blessings and such a person is fortunate so fortunate soul are those who get the blessings from all the souls from their heart and on the basis of truth so to what extent i am truthful to what extent i am honest this is a subtle self checking thing which everyone must do and one more thing is about faith in truth how much faith i have in truth if everybody labels or levels false accusation against me to what extent i remain stable in the face of such an adverse situation a person is there he has not done anything but false charges are leveled against him so to what extent he remains stable this is something it depends on our faith in truth to what extent is what is my extent of faith nishche in truth so when you know that you are truth in last recently there was one murli on sabhyata good manners where baba said you see that somebody is speaking untruth you can't tolerate but he is speaking untruth and you are getting angry so this is also not sabhyata this is also not good manner then it means that you are don't have faith in truth truth is like the sun and the clouds of untruth cannot hide the sun of truth truth is self evident you don't have to prove truth truth is already proven it's self proven it's self evident it's conspicuous you can you can see it you don't have you don't need supports for truth truth doesn't need any evidence in one way but in the court matter and all those evidences are necessary that is different but truth itself is the highest so one who is situated in truth doesn't have to fear anybody one who is situated in truth in truth he has nothing really to hide he is there is a feeling of joy in truth as my mahatma gandhi said i don't know whether god is tr- truth or not but i know that truth is god i am not sure i have not seen god so whether he is truth or not i don't know but i have seen the truth i have been in face to face with truth vis a vis with truth so this truth i know is god himself so such faith in truth such confidence in truth it's what is needed and one more thing and the last thing about it is when we don't know things we should not comment 
when we are not sure about the veracity of things about the truth of things we should remain aloof rather than commenting on it for example a very simple story there is a railway in one railway a bogey a young child a young boy about 20 years is traveling with his father and the young boy shouts oh the trees are going behind and after some time he shouts oh the clouds are moving with us and after some time he says oh the greenery is so beautiful and there is a couple who is sitting ahead in front and the man says this is a 20 year old boy and he is talking like a child is it not a stupidity why don't you take him to a doctor the couple says why don't you take this boy to a doctor he is 20 year old and he is behaving like child he is so child is so stupidity winds are going with us clouds are traveling with us trees are going behind is he sitting in the train for the first time so why don't you take him to some psychiatrist some doctor the father says we are coming from hospital only <laughs> we are coming from hospital only he was born blind and he got operated and today is the first day where he got the vision so one should not be very fast in commenting because we do not know the truth do we know the truth of ourselves we do not know our own self how do we know the truth of others truth is a very great thing it needs search research after that you understand to understand our own being it's a great journey because i myself in is covered with so many layers of untruth if somebody ask me who i am i really don't know the theoretical knowledge i am soul i am coming from supreme abode and 284 births and 5000 years these are informations truth is, it is not truth truth is something else truth needs efforts truth needs investigation satyanvesan truth needs going into the depth of it so don't be quick don't be so fast impulsive to comment wait stop think get situated in your own truth and let the being read shines with truth and then you start receiving the blessings of others from their heart and such souls who receive the blessings from the heart on the basis of truth are the fortunate souls om shanti